after this stage, then it's all about kernel depth. So, and there's a lot, you know, you can, those high yield guys will tell you, you can gain 20, 30 bushel even just by kernel depth. And welcome back to another agronomic update here in central Iowa. Phil Long, regional agronomist for Liquid Grow. Ashley Van Horst, seed and seed treatment manager here with Liquid Grow. And we're out here in the field together today talking about ear flex yes. and the importance of ear flex and why it matters. Yeah, so we talk a lot about ear flex in October, November, December time frame when we're deciding our hybrids that we're going to plant for the following year. So Phil, can you tell us a little bit about the flex versus a fixed ear, the difference between the two? Yeah, so most of our hybrids nowadays are primarily in the middle. Okay. You know, they're, they're more of a semi-flex or semi-determinant, which means they're in the middle. And so I should back up and say all hybrids flex in all three categories we're going to talk about today, just to different extents. So that's okay. what the fixed and flex really mean. So a full flex ear, which we don't have a lot of those, and the reason is they're a little more uh, risky because they can flex down in all three regions that we're gonna talk about versus a fixed, which is for the most part, it, it's fixed. It wants to put on a set ear, whether that's rows around, rows or kernels long or, or kernel depth, it, it's more fixed in that regard. It doesn't flex a lot. So if it's given the opportunity to flex, it's not going to. So those are the ones I typically think of. You need to plant higher populations if you wanna get a certain yeah. yield and so forth. So for an ear to flex versus stay fixed, what are some of those conditions, like you said, population or other things that we do to change the flex versus the fixed? Yeah, that's a good point. It's all about the management because we, that's why this is so important because the things that we do affect how the ear flexes. So I didn't mention the three categories, but it's, it's girth, which is rows around, which is early season. I like to think of it V4 to V7 when that's set rows around and then the length that the kernel's long. So that's kind of in between, but it's a very long stretch of period. It's basically after it sets the rows around all the way up until early reproduction. So about now we're, we're around milk stage. Um, that's about the cutoff. You know, it can still abort even up to this stage at the very tip. So after this stage, then it's all about kernel depth. So, and there's a lot, you know, you can, those high yield guys will tell you, you can gain 20, 30 bushel even just by kernel depth. So um, critical too. But the things that we do in terms of management plays a, a pretty big role in that. So I'll start off at the early season since we talked about rows around or girth. Uh, the one thing that always comes to mind for me is those hybrids that flex more early season are the ones that you're probably telling customers, don't plant that one first. Don't plant it in the cold soils don't start it off on the wrong foot essentially because those are the ones that are gonna be more influenced by poor conditions. So I'd also think on the flip side of this, those ones are gonna benefit from in fertilizer, you know? So having fertility there, right? When it's ready to go, makes it happy and it has a good condition to be planted into. It starts off strong, that V5, V4 to V7 time period. It's healthy, feels good. So it's gonna put as many around as it can. Sure, so what you're saying, Phil, is some of these hybrids that are deciding the girth at V5, if they're stressed at V5, it could influence where we're at today exactly. in the field yeah. and ultimately yeah, and that, our yield. Exactly, and that's, that flex, the way you want to think about it is, I like to think about it flexing down, but if it flexes early, like we just talked about, that means you need to protect it from stress early. Sure. So, and, and like I mentioned, a full flex, this is why it's so risky, because it can flex down in all three ways. So all season long, it needs to be cared for, essentially. That's why the full flex, uh, it, there's not as many of those around. Sure. Uh, more of them are in the, in the intermediate, semi-flex, semi-determinant uh, categories because they're not quite as risky and we can see the rewards from it uh, as long as we got good conditions. Absolutely. So. Okay, Phil, so now that we know about fixed ear versus flexed ear and kind of the impact it can have on the acre and on the ultimate yield, what are some things that the viewers can implement on their own farms to help influence this next year throughout the entire growing season? Yeah, that's a great point. And this year has been uh, a challenge to say the least. You know, I got a, a leaf here that shows the obvious uh, nitrogen mm -hmm. deficiency. I've been in fields that, you know, especially those that have maybe done fall fertilizer or fall anhydrous, things like that, that have a lot of nitrogen deficiency. We've just had a tough season for nitrogen deficiency. So when you're out there, uh, looking at your hybrids, you, you may see some extra tip back or zippered ears, things like that. Keep those things in mind because that's telling the story of what happened this season. And that's what this ear flex is all about. 
you know, hybrids flex in a, in a lot of different ways and they respond to the management we're giving them. So, you know, we just got past fungicide application season. That and in-season nitrogen with the nitrogen loss we've had, yeah. those kind of things help those hybrids that flex late. Mm -hmm. So it's good sometimes when they have that later season flex when we can do management tactics like fungicide, plant health, uh, giving it a little extra nitrogen, a little extra fertility in season that maybe it lost or maybe it just could utilize if we have the moisture and we could hit that next yield level. So all those things come into play, but it also is affected by the hybrid that you're choosing. And that's why sometimes you'll see those take major advantage of a late season situation. You may see a 260 on the yield monitor instead of a 220. Uh, there's just a lot of different things going on out there and understanding how your hybrids respond to that management is critical. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very important to remember this when you guys are out doing late season uh, corn walking or walking your fields and doing these yield estimates. A lot played into your yield this year. So just keep that in mind. And if you have any questions or need a recommendation, reach out to your local liquid grow rep. They can help you out with hybrid selection or any sort of fall application that you need for the rest of the season. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Stay in the know with liquid grow.